And going over to that story now, the Hollywood actors officially went on strike at midnight yesterday, joining writers who walked out in May. And today's Daniel Monaghan has more on the first dual work stoppage in the entertainment industry since 1960. Actors Union SAG-AFTRA posted on Twitter, 12.01 a.m. Pacific time, that's a wrap. Officially commencing the strike, the move will force film and TV studios to halt many productions across the U.S. and abroad. Union President Fran Drescher says she can't believe how far apart the two sides are on so many issues. I am shocked by the way the people that we have been in business with are treating us. Drescher says a dire moment in history has arrived. If we don't stand tall right now, we are all going to be in trouble. We are all going to be in jeopardy of being replaced by machines. The union president added that the studios will share the wealth because they cannot exist without the actors. Actor Josh Hartnett says the industry is experiencing rapid change and ground rules for the future need to be set. I think a very important um, time in, uh, in these negotiations for both the writers and the actors. Both writers and actors are demanding increases in base pay and residuals in the streaming TV era. They also want assurances their work will not be replaced by AI. The actors fear AI could be used to duplicate their voices and likenesses and want control over how these digital simulations are used on screen. That's something actor Carrie Elway says films have been sounding the alarm about for years. It's always been we need to, like, protect ourselves, whether it's HAL or the Terminator. The actor is calling on Congress to draft new laws. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers says it offered the highest percentage increase in minimum pay levels in 35 years and significant protections on AI-related matters. Striking Hollywood actors are expected to join film and TV writers on picket lines on Friday. Daniel Monahan, NTD News. And joining us now for more is Tommy Habib. He is a veteran TV host and executive producer who was also part of the last actor's strike in 1980. Good morning, Tommy. Part of the reason are the changes that AI and streaming platforms brought with them, as we just heard. Can you go in a bit more detail and tell us how exactly they impacted the actors? Well, I'll tell you. I mean, these are very, very scary times. Um, I remember back in 1980 when we... I was a young kid and walking the picket lines. We had kind of the same things. You know, technology uh, is moving so fast. And back then it was it was pay television uh, that we were re really worried about. And we didn't have the Internet yet. So we weren't quite sure what the future lied, laid out for us. And But because of that strike, it made a huge difference in, in my career and being able to make a living in this industry. Uh, you know, the, the, the thing is about today, we just need some protections. We need some some guardrails on AI. There's no question we're excited and want to see an increase in our base pay because we hadn't had one in a long time. But most important, it's getting guardrails on AI so so that we're protected. You know, we've been such an important piece of the film and, and television industry since it started, the actors. And uh, we're going to lose that with AI because it's doing nothing but getting better. And I got to tell you, even for you guys sitting there reading this news off and reporting the news, y'all are going to be the first to be affected by AI because it's, it's going to be a little bit easier. They're going to type in what they want you to say. And it's getting pretty scary. Hmm. And in terms of guardrails, what type of guardrails would you be expecting or would you hope for? Yeah, so there's many, many things that, that can happen, you know, to, to put these guardrails up. And they're just, they're throwing some fluff out there, but they want final control over uh, over the AI and what they say and, and who they use. But my, my idea, and I wrote about this and it's in my blog and it just got published in these stories. I believe just like blockchain that we could do some sort of fractional credits it makes the most sense. So when AI goes out there and grabs uh, grabs words or grabs feelings, it's grabbing it from somewhere. So why can't it document every move? And it could if the the guys that wrote the 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 program, the the AI programs, control that, and the government could put 
restrictions on that and our industry could force them to put restrictions on that so that everybody would get credit that that AI is using. Hmm. So I also want to touch on the other side because Disney's Bob Iger said that the demands are unrealistic and that right now is just not a good time. So basically it would add to the challenges that the industry is already facing and he finds that dangerous. Now I'm just wondering <laughs> about your reaction on this. Yeah, I, I, it's a bit of a joke. So the reason they're having such problems is because their own mistakes. See, I come from the producer's side as well. I'm an actor. Dick Clark gave me the tools to become a producer, and that's what made my career work for so many years. But the 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 uh, the networks and the primarily the big studio guys, they uh, they all jumped into this streaming piece, and they've lost billions and billions of dollars. They hadn't figured out a way to make streaming work, and they all started fighting and and putting all this money into productions and over creating content, spending fifteen twenty million dollars on an episode of television, trying to get people to watch. And believe me, they've made some great television out there, and I'm proud of what they did. But they made a mistake and they put too much money and they're all bleeding money. They lost billions and billions of dollars. You know, they were trying to follow Netflix because Netflix had a working model first that was making money. And then all of a sudden everybody overspent. And now they're going to try to blame the actors, the writers and everybody else in the industry to take the hit for them. Well, we can't do that. They made a mistake. They need to own up to that mm -hmm. mistake. They're still making money. Don't get me wrong. So it's, it's not a bad play, but I, and as a businessman, I understand you want to watch that bottom line, but you've got to stay with the people that brought you. You've got to take care of us. And, and that's a huge problem. And I think we need to fight for that. And I'll promise right. you, I'll, although I'm a producer, I'll be on that picket line this week. I think you're making a, an interesting point here. Also, would you please touch on really quick who this will impact the strike? Well, I got to tell you, you know, if the writers have been on since May, if we were to go back to work tomorrow, we wouldn't see production. We, the end user wouldn't see television for 10, 11 months. It takes a long time to ramp up and it affects so many people, not just the actors and the writers. And but you've got not only the grips, but you've got the people in the studios and the networks, even all the way down to painters, people that clean up and help. Uh, maintain the studios and, and then you're talking about transportation as well uh, so many industries that are tied to our business uh, are going to be affected and it's really sad we're talking about you know there's a hundred thousand over a hundred thousand actors out there and uh, and a hundred thousand writers out there. there's even more actors that will be striking but it's going to affect millions of people in our business mm. Well, let's see how all of this plays out. Thank you so much, Tommy Habib. I really appreciate your time this morning. Absolutely. Thank you for, thanks for having me. If you want to learn more, go to TommyHabib.com or any of my social media. We're writing about it constantly. And you can read my blog and, and uh, my piece on factional credits. All right. Thanks for pointing that out.